So Michael, we're here at this uh, international bee conference where 300 people are here to learn about the bees. Um, so what is, what is your personal learning from this conference? Yeah, thank you for asking that question. What I have learned from this conference and of course it's impossible to um, say it in one sentence, it's even possible to sum it all up and I think a lot of parts will also later on reveal themselves. Everything is not yet fully revealed and, um, and also um, this conference which is a tremendous opportunity for people from all over the world who live with bees to gather and to experience this togetherness with a focus on honeybees is touching every single person on so many levels um, on an intellectual, on a business level but also on the heart level and then for one own and also with each other so there's a complexity involved these, you may call this them an insect creature and yet it is astonishing to see how th how that animal which l appears like insects has the power to touch us very deeply on a ex on a fundamental level we feel touched in our heart in our soul it generates an attitude from which we begin to reflect into our life in general and there are no limits to it. So when you ask, what did I learn from this conference? It's a little bit endless because it pertains to everything. To, we could say, to touch bees means to touch the entire world. And to be touched by bees means to be touched by the entire world. There is this uniqueness around bees, which is almost impossible to describe. It is better to experience it. And then you have all of a sudden 300 people coming together with that sensation and experience and they start to mingle and it, it is quite transformative. And strangers from 40 countries, 50 countries from, all, from different continents come together and with an unusual ease feel so intimate with each other as if we, 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 we would all meet our best friends we mm -hmm. hadn't seen for quite some time so this familiarity is such a gift we can all share and and in response now we are all leaving and going into the world and we are taking this with us and we meet other people in the bus on the airplane at home at work and familiarity, the sense and and even more so the sense of belonging. This is one of those you could call it wisdom aspects of honeybees that they not only teach us how important it is to belong or how important it is, how obvious it is, how deeply we belong to each other, but they make it they enable us to palpate it. It's not an abstract understanding, it's not an abstract teaching or wisdom, but one can feel it. Mm -hmm. It is a, almost a, a, f an, a full body experience. And then to go home with this full body experience makes it very natural and very joyful. It's thinking about it, I feel like, yeah, bees are an opportunity for us to reconnect with our joy with just a funda on a fundamental level the joy to be alive the joy to be a human being and the joy of living with other human beings on this planet so if we put the learning from the bees in the context of leadership how could these leaders 
approach their organization, their teams, and, well, the bigger whole of the organization in a better way? What could they learn from the bees? Mm. Yeah. yeah, that is a beautiful question, leadership. And it, the first thing for me coming up is a general question. I answer your question with a question. What is true leadership? Um, and I'm coming back to that in a moment, but when we look into in the bees, in the way this animal is structured in regards to leadership, it is fascinating because the typical human leader is n nowhere to be found. But rather, leadership is governed by need. It is governed by the task which needs to be tended to. And that is how leadership shows itself that the tasks, the, gr the greater picture, will determine what needs to be done. It is a almost a leadership which, re it is a leadership which comes out of what you just said it yourself, a leadership coming out of the whole picture. It has to arise from an understanding of all parts being involved. And then I can become, as a leader, not someone who ne uh, necessarily has to make a decision or, um, or passes to pass out orders, but rather it is a knowing of needs and to voice them and find then an audience which will move with those needs. So that as a leader, I cannot be, now let me rephrase it, as a if if. I am, as a leader, am the only one to hold the information. It will be more difficult to get tasks done versus a leadership which is extremely inclusive, which is at any time open for all feeds of information coming to me and is more like a um, something which which receives and sends all the time and the moment it goes out then openness invites feedback invites information and it's one becomes like a, a station of movement um, when we look at leadership within the beehive there are endless places and functions within which are beautiful examples for just this phenomenon of non-locality almost, that we may approach the question of how is comb grown and who organizing, who is organizing all the work, and that is this typical human approach. How does this work? Just to find out that it's an, a very organic, evolving process where um, such a multitude of individ individual bees are part of a task without leadership because there, there is and what and uh, we may ask what enables this what enables all the individual bees to to perform all those tasks and it must be some underlying sense of unity mm. where we are very intimately connected with each other and also we have this tremendous sense of belonging that we know we need each other. This task can only be performed with everybody involved as equals because our life depends on working together. It, it shifts the essentials to my life is so dependent on all life around me. I, as a human being, wouldn't be able to live without the entire earthen biosphere. I would, n I would not exist. Mm. And that very basic understanding is at work within the beehive. And how, as an organization, as a society, 
can we integrate that knowledge that not only do we belong intimately uh, to each other, but our life depends on each other on an existential level. And to empower leadership through this knowledge will, I think, enable our quest for uh, the development, for developing leadership in a very new way. It will enable us to seek and look in, in new territory to find resources for a sustainable leadership, to find resources which can help us shape leadership in the 21st century. It is a, such a rich time we all live in. It asks a lot of us and honeybees in that respect are a tremendous resource. The, the, um, another approach, another question is how can the bees inspire the individual le leader? So the, the courage we talked about during the conference. The courage. Yeah. yeah. So how, w w what, what's the message from the bees for the individual leader in order to, to get to this belonging? Yeah, that's a big, big question. And um, one thing we could say that I think we all are united in a very fundamental question. And that question is, who am I? Who am I, am I in this body, in my native culture, in my environment? what is life on a very basic level to ask that question again and again almost like an, as an exercise as a practice who am I and when you try it yourself to say so who am I it has it can have such a calming effect and also it is a way to reconnect to stop with what we are doing and just to say who am I? And the open-endedness then creates space. And in, in regards to honeybees, I think in some ways that uh, let me say it this way, um, when we ask, who am I, or when we reflect on our sense of self, whatever our sense of self is, will determine how we walk through life, how we see life, how we understand life, um, the way we see ourselves, the way we define our own self, determines how we are with other people, it determines how we see, how we define that, what, what is outside of self. And in that regards, the experience of honeybees is quite different. When it comes to that question, who am I? And sense of self. The sense of self of honeybees is not as clearly defined as the one we used in our own life. The sense of self of an individual bee is in some ways beyond the human definition of a self because as a single honeybee is not representing the real animal. The the so it's a the language is so interesting because we call it the individual bee, but the individual bee is only part of a of the a larger being. The biological term is superorganism, but the single bee will die. It's not able to live without all the others. So this individual is rather part of something else. The larger unit of the organism 
is actually the true self. That individual being just belongs to this larger self. And that's such a beautiful teaching for us mm -hmm. that our sense of self or in our sense of self to find that belonging to the larger self is I think a beautiful place to remind of ourselves to come back that our sense of self belongs to a larger self just like a bee does.